Apple is going to shrink the next Mac Mini when it adds an M4 processor, according to an often reliable source of insider information. It, it's Mark Gurman. The desktop <laughs> could be the size of an Apple TV. Apple yeah, hasn't redesigned Griffin, Mac Mini since. Griffin, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Your your uh -huh. your levels is your levels are really low for some reason. Can you turn it up anyway? I could do it manually here, but no, then I have to turn up Lewis as well. Yeah, no, no. is that better now? Oh yeah, that's much better. Okay, I'll, I'll keep this window open. Okay. Anyways, Apple hasn't redesigned the Mac Mini since 2010. The Mac Mini has actually only had two ever designs: the like white polycarbonate one and their current aluminum one. It's kind of crazy. But Apple has finally found a way to improve on the tiny desktop. It'll get much smaller, according to information leaked by Mark Gurman. The, com the computer could end up about the size of an Apple TV, a 3.7-inch square. For reference, the current Mac Mini is a 7.8-inch square. Um, a question I have is how they're going to fit all of the ports on the back of it, because <clears> like <throat> you know, the, the Mac Mini is currently about as wide as all of the ports that are plugged into it. Um, Put them on the top. I is Apple has tested models with at least three USB-C ports on the back of the Mini, in addition to an area for plugging in the power cable and an HDMI port for connecting the device to TV sets and monitors. But, you know, there, the Mac Mini also comes with two USB-A ports, and it comes with an Ethernet jack and a headphone jack. He doesn't mention those, so maybe they'll be cutting some of those, uh, well, what Apple considers legacy ports, but what I consider kind of essential ports for a computer. Um, <laughs> The Mac Mini will keep its aluminum casing. It won't switch to plastic, so that's good at least. Um, and they will continue to offer M4 and M4 Pro versions. It's not like when they switch to the tiny case that they're going to drop that sort of a mid-tier model that I think is a pretty good balance of power and price. So it uh, sounds like mostly good news, although I'm a little, little hesitant that they're going to butcher my favorite machine. <laughs> butcher it? That is the case. I, yeah, I don't want them to take ports out. I don't. I don't either. And and I don't want something as big as a Mac Studio, the Mac Mini. You know, it's it it it's it, it's a perfect little nugget of a computer for me. <laughs> yeah, but they're gonna make it way more powerful. I mean, it's essentially a Mac Studio Mini with the M4 Pro in there. I mean, to a degree, it is, and that's what I like about it. But you know, I yeah. I almost. I almost every day plug something into my Mac or unplug something. Like every single port on the back of my Mac Mini is filled. Yeah, but that's nothing that a dongle can't fix. And you know we're yeah, heading back to dongle. That's why you get a desktop computer, so you don't have to ever deal with like this, this dongle problem. I, I skipped over the dongle generation for this very reason. Oh, you never had any dongles, huh? Well, no. those were tough times, man, let me tell you. Those were tough <laughs> I suffered days. in other ways because I still had a 2015 MacBook Pro in early 2023, but that's beside the point. <laughs> yeah, but at least you had some USB-A ports. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, I could see them pulling some ports out of here, but in which case, I think the trade-off with more power, smaller size, so that you could just have it on your desk, and then you have a dock. I, I don't want that solution by any, by any means. I think I like docks, but when you have to have a dock, it's super annoying. I think that it should have enough ports for regular people. But if they're going to make it smaller, they could put ports on the side. I don't love that implementation because it's way less clean, and now you have cables that are pulling on your mac from the side which kind of makes it like skew and not <laughs> sit on your desk like facing forward because you have like the like the pressure for it being pulled from its side but for that chip i think that might be a pretty good trade-off and you could do crazy video editing with an m4 pro you could probably that that would be powerful enough for i would say 95 percent of people's video editing especially for content creators there's no way you would need anything more powerful than that. Now they haven't released it yet, but I mean, you can do 4K I mean, the, the, the editing. Two MacBook Pro is already more than powerful enough for that. Yeah. I do 4K video editing all the time, and it's and it 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 handles it absolutely swimmingly. Yeah, the M1 is the same. Like I was mm -hmm. arguing with myself last night because I'm thinking about getting the M4 Max MacBook Pro when they release it, and I was like, dude, you do not need this. You do not <laughs> need this. The the M1 is is perfectly good enough for anything that I'm going to be doing. And not to mention, I haven't even put out a YouTube video in like seven months. But then I think it's not about need, Lewis. It's about the best. It's about having the best. You know, you got to have the best that there is. You got to be able to, sh you got to be able to shave 
you know, 10 seconds off your 4K video export <laughs> for that one export that you do every six months of video. It's about that. I'm not even editing the cult cast anymore. <laughs> Griffin's doing it. So, like, for me, it's really pointless to have such a powerful machine because I could probably get away with a 15-inch MacBook Air at this point. And in a lot of ways, that machine would, would, would be, I think, a better all-around computing machine because it's not as heavy. It's easier to carry. And I've thought about doing that implementation, like getting a MacBook Air and then a Mac Studio or something just to have... Because I, I really do... I know I say this all the time. I actually really do want to get back into YouTube. I should have never left. It was a huge mistake. <laughs> it was a huge mistake. I've been telling you, I think even a MacBook Air would be more than enough to handle the Cultcast live streams because I, an M4 MacBook Air would probably be more powerful than that PC you have right now. I don't think so, man. I mean, the video card that I have in here is a, um, a 4080, and its mm. encoders, its video encoders, I think are unparalleled, unless you get a 4090. But it's able to uh, uh, to encode in in YouTube's um, highest quality codec, which I'm not sure a Mac could even do. I think you actually have to have Nvidia to do that. I forget what codec it's called. It's like the A something. AV one. AV AV one. Yeah. So we we broadcast in AV one, which I will say when we upgraded to AV one, it made a huge difference in quality. 